Hello, my name is Dan Gonzalez. I'm with Patio Enhancement Group. We are a commercial dealer and installer for Calcana Infrared Heaters. We're here today at a construction project called Carmine's Restaurant in Rosemont, Illinois, which is just outside of Chicago. And we have 10 Calcana heaters we're gonna be installing at this uh, location on the patio. And today we're gonna to talk about the installation process of a Calcana heater, show you a little bit about what it takes to, from the point you get the boxes delivered to you to the point that we get a, a heater up in the air. What we have in front of us now is an unpacked model PHS 50, which is a 15 foot long unit, but for shipping purposes, uh, the unit comes partially disassembled. You'll see a 10 foot long section here in front of you, and we can need to add an additional five feet for the full 15 feet of infrared tube. The first extra component you'll see is this long box. This contains an extra five foot piece of infrared tube that we'll have to put on to the end of the unit, which is right here. This is not the typical end that you saw on the PHS 40. This is meant to be extended, so we will be attaching our additional pipe to the pipe that protrudes from the end of the unit. Also inside this box is what's called a baffle. A baffle is a really a turbulator that can uh, make the flue gases, mix up the flue gases, keep them moving so we can have better heat exchange on the latter part of the unit to keep the heat output up. So that's contained in this box. The next thing we're gonna need to extend this unit another five feet is a piece of reflector. We have an extra piece of reflector there that Doug is holding. And that's simply an extension piece, the same reflector, but a five foot long piece. Also, we're gonna need some grill on the bottom. And we have an extra piece of five foot grill that comes packed. And we'll be adding that onto the end of the unit also. Here is our baffle or turbulator, and here is our five foot piece of extra infrared pipe. Notice the flare connection on this pipe flares out a little bit so it easily slides over the pipe that protrudes from the base unit. Lastly, with the model PH50, we have a part box that comes in the, in the main box and we have the, our end cap, which will go on the end of the unit once we put our five foot extension on. We have our control panel, just we had, as, as we had with the 10 foot unit, and our instruction manual and installation manual. Also a bag of screws, and we'll show you how, what to do with those. Before we start in, uh, drilling our screws down, we want to make sure that this uh, auxiliary piece of reflector is tight up against as best it can be. So you may need a second man to hold it up while we put in our first screw. Again, no holes need to be drilled. They are self-drilling screws that are provided. Now, you'll see here that Dan is only going to be putting screws on the top, and we're not going to put screws on the side, the side that you see here, right away. And you'll see the, the reason for doing that. Okay, so now we've got enough screws in the piece of reflector to hold it in place. But again, we're not going to put the two remaining screws on the side. And we'll, again, we'll show you why that is. The next step is to return the entire unit over. You'll need two men. Okay, now the unit is shaping up as you can see. The next step then is to take the piece of pipe that we already had inserted our baffle. And now that we've got our uh, reflector installed, we're gonna insert the baffle and secondary piece of pipe and connect it to the main unit section. Okay, remember we've got a flare connection here, so this auxiliary piece will slide right over the main pipe that's coming from the unit. Sometimes you have to work it in by twisting now we want to slide it to a point that the other end of the pipe is roughly half an inch, is close to, close to half an inch beyond the edge of the reflector. And you'll see why in a second here we want to do that. It's now we're going to be attaching, inserting our end plate. The end plate has tabs on it just like we, we have tabs on the other end. And we want to insert the end of the pipe and it's got a reduction fitting here that slides into the cutout on our end plate. So we slide those in, seat it on the tabs, and make sure our pipe is inserted in the cutout. Now, right now we have all the components positioned 
in the correct in the correct position and now it's time to screw down our auxiliary piece of pipe now that we know it's in the right position. So we simply take some of the same sheet metal self-drilling screws and screw down through both pipes. And we'll want to do this as many, at least three to four screws uh, to make sure we got a very tight connection that's not going to move uh, while we're trying to install and lift the unit in the air. We've got the, the auxiliary pipe now screwed down and in place. We want to now insert our auxiliary or five foot piece of grill. We want to slide, temporarily slide our panel out, get our grill inserted. Spreading apart the reflector is always helpful to doing so. Makes, makes it easy to do, to slide that grill in and get it underneath the outer lip of the reflector. Now that we've got the grill in, we can don't worry about it dropping down. We're going to be able to lift it later, but we want to get our end panel back on. Okay, we've slid our end plate in now that we've got our tube and our grill inserted. And now uh, Dan is going to insert some screws. And we're only going to put in two screws to hold it in place. We'll put the rest of the screws on after we lock our grill in place. Included in the bag of screws are what we call grill clips. We put it in in a diagonal fashion, the T portion going down in one of the squares. We want to space them similarly to how we do on the main unit. Once it's placed on in there, we rotate it. A pair of pliers is the best thing to use. We rotate it, we let the other end of the clip rest on the lip of the reflector. And again, taking one of the same screws out of our screw bag, and we just simply screw that down. Okay, so the last step is to place our screws on the side of the reflector. Remember, we left those out to make it easy to separate the reflector to insert our grill. So those screws need to be added on the end of the unit, and of course, at the very beginning, of the new of the extra piece of reflector and Dan's doing that now. Again, using the same screws that came in our screw packet. After the unit is turned over, you'll notice that boy, we have some screws we have to put in here and those were not accessible when the unit was upside down. So we're going to go ahead and put those in and we're going to match the pattern that we do that's on the main base unit. Okay, now that we have a complete unit, looking at it from the top side, you notice that we have three hanging points, unlike the 10-foot unit or the PHS-40, the PHS-50, with the extra piece of reflector and the extra end panel, we have an extra set of rabbit ear hanging points. So we have hanging points next to the burner, 10 feet away, another set of hanging points, and now an yet additional set of hanging points, five feet away. And now we, all we have to do is, like the PHS 40 10 foot units, attach our brackets in the same way. Remembering, of course, that on this unit we have three brackets instead of two for the extra five foot of length. You may already be asking, well, how do I control a unit once I have it powered up and piped? Well, that's the answer is right here. We have a controller here that has two components on it. We have an on-off control. Now remember, this is a low voltage, so we need to bring low voltage to wherever we mount this, typically on, on the outdoor wall of the patio, it could be mounted indoors. We bring low voltage wires to wherever we're going, and these wires come back to the control panel you see up there. So once those five wires are connected and there's a wiring diagram right in the unit on the inside of the uh, stainless steel cover, uh, the operation is fairly simple. There's an on-off switch, turning, unit, turning the unit on and off, and then to modulate the unit from minimum to maximum output. Turns just like a volume knob, low to high, to set the amount of heat output to wherever you'd like. Very simple control, but very effective.